Manchester United are for sale, which begs a couple of questions for the Glazers. Why sell and why now? To get the answers, let's take you through the Glazer journey. It began in 2005, the year YouTube was founded, Live 8 took on the world, and the Glazers completed the takeover of Manchester United via a leveraged buyout, or an LBO. What is that, I hear you cry? Great question. Well, it's a bit like buying a house with a mortgage, except in this case, the house pays the interest. And the mortgage! And the Glazers get to enjoy it all for free. Now, before that leverage buyout, Manchester United carried a debt of £110 million. Overnight, of sorts, that debt increased by £550 million to £660 million. We have two charts, both emphasising how big that is. Now, that's a lot of money, but the issue wasn't solely down to the amount of money. It was also due to where it came from and how much it cost. As you can see here, half of the £550 million came from bank loans with a very steady 5% interest rate, something you may have got on your mortgage at the time. However, on this other half, we have the money that the Glazers needed to find to be able to afford to buy Manchester United, and they opted to do that through hedge fund loans, those lovely people. Uh, that £275 million came at a slightly higher interest rate of 14.5%. And I hope no one had a mortgage on that interest rate. And it's worth remembering this huge cost at this huge interest rate would be paid by Manchester United, not by the Glazers. That burden was causing the club issues as well. In 2006, Manchester United paid £113 million in interest payments. That was two thirds of their total annual revenue that year. Ooh. Those interest payments did average out at just under £100 million over the forthcoming years, but they still accounted for a third of Manchester United's annual revenue. And that was impacting United's ability to buy players, add in the fact that Chelsea were starting to win titles under Roman Abramovich, and Manchester City had been bought by Sheikh Mansour, and life was getting tricky. So, in 2010, the Glazers restructured the debt. How did they do that? Well, they issued 500 million pounds worth of bonds at an interest rate that was half of that eye-watering, you remember it, 14.5%. Then in 2012, the Glazers floated the club on the New York Stock Exchange. That raised another 150 million pounds. The Glazers kept one half of that and then they used the other half to pay off some of the debt that was created by their own takeover. And it had the desired effect these are those interest repayments I mentioned earlier. You can see here, come 2017, they were at a much healthier looking 20-ish million pounds per year. Now you remember those lovely solar system visualizations where you see Jupiter and go, whoa, that's big. And then it brings in the sun and you go, whoa, Jupiter's tiny. Well, look at this. And now look at this. These are the top five Premier League interest payments in 2021. And all of a sudden, Manchester United here are at the top, much higher than anyone else, maybe apart from Tottenham, but worth bearing in mind here, 18.3 million pounds basically covers the cost of the new, brand new, sparkly Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which cost them 1.5 billion pounds. Manchester United are paying more interest on behalf of the Glazers for no new stadium and the privilege of their ownership. Now, it's not all been bad for Manchester United under the Glazers, at least from a club's perspective. The supporters may feel a little bit differently. Uh, United's total revenue has tripled from £170 million in 2006 to £494 million in 2021. It's also worth noting that revenue has dropped 15%, and that is the worst performance of England's top six clubs. Underpinning much of that revenue has been their commercial growth, much of that has been credited to the work of Executive Vice Chairman Ed Woodward. More sponsorships, more partners, bigger contracts. It all took Manchester United's commercial revenue from £39 million in 2006 to a figure approaching £280 million in 2020. Uh, there was a slight uh, reduction in 2021 due to the effects of the COVID pandemic. All of which brings us to November 2020, and the Glazers publicly confirming their interest in selling Manchester United. There is a suggestion the Glazers have been looking for investment or a buyer for Manchester United for some time in private. That search clearly hasn't borne any fruit as yet. Add in the fact that Liverpool have now made it clear 
publicly that they are for sale and you can understand why the Glazers would want to make their own situation with Manchester United available to everyone in the public too. Which is also a good time to mention the elephant in the TIFO studio, what many would see as the most damning element of the Glazers' ownership of Manchester United. Dividends! Yes! It's usually the case that a club's owners put money into the club to help it progress. For example, in the last decade, Manchester City, £684 million in. Chelsea's owners, £516 million in. Aston Villa's owners, £506 million in. And then we have the Glazers at Manchester United. Out! Here are those figures. Now, the 2020 figure is higher because some of that is the delayed portion from 2021. But either way, the Glazers have taken out £166 million from Manchester United since 2020. 16. So why sell when you can take so much money out of your asset? Firstly, the European Super League is unlikely to happen anytime soon, if at all. That is a loss of potential guaranteed increased income that the Glazers would have been hoping for. Without that, you could say Manchester United are at a peak valuation and it could be a really good time to sell. Manchester United's current valuation by share price is about two and a half billion dollars, although it's been clear for a while that the Glazers would expect to sell for much more than that for what they see as a global prime sporting institution. Forbes estimate the value of the club at closer to 4.6 billion dollars. And in fact, the share price of Manchester United has already gone up 17% since the potential sale news broke, which has added another 400 million dollars to the share price valuation alone. As we know, the Glazers are already in profit with Manchester United because they put no money in. How can you make a loss if you put no money in? One thing they will do is make a lot more money on the proceeds of any sale that they do get. And that may be key because the Glazers may have reached the point where they can no longer avoid putting money into Manchester United or specifically Old Trafford. It is an iconic stadium, but it has been somewhat neglected since the Glazers arrived. Both Fulham and Leicester have spent more on capital expenditure than Manchester United in the past decade. When the European Super League fell through, the Glazers said they would look at rebuilding or redeveloping Old Trafford. It's likely they have now looked at that and realised just how much that could cost them. If we look at other Premier League clubs, we know that a redevelopment can cost anything from £200 million to sort out a few stands, or £1.5 billion to build a whole new stadium, like that shiny new Tottenham Hotspur stadium that Tottenham are paying all those interest payments for that are less than Manchester United's interest payments, which are there to enable the Glazers to own the club. Either way, the cost to redevelop Old Trafford is gonna come somewhere on this lovely sliding scale. Now, I'm no financial expert, but I imagine it might be complicated for the Glazers to borrow more money to carry out this work. And if they were to spend money on the stadium, the Glazers would also need to commit to another 10 years or more as the owners of Manchester United to get any sort of return on that investment. And that is a long commitment. So in conclusion, now may well be the most efficient time for the Glazers to sell Manchester United. But who knows how it will all pan out in the real world of mortgages and prawn sandwiches. Bye. If you liked today's video, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like TIFO, we think that you'll also like The Athletic. If you want the best news, features and interviews about the World Cup, the Premier League and European football, as well as loads of other sports, The Athletic is the place for you. And as part of our special deal, you can get it for £1 per month for six months. See the link in the description.